Mexico was an indicator in the meeting in 99 for a meeting of ICOMAS just to understand why it was that Spanish Town had not been, uh, had not received approval as a national heritage site and the World Heritage Series. Um, part of it was because everybody was fighting to own the Spanish Town. So one of the things I had come back to and done was to have some discussions with UDC Council and the Heritage Trust itself as to how we could move forward. Um, it was agreed after some time that it didn't really make sense to, to push us hard for the World Heritage um, factor, but really look at what we could do to, to merge the concerns and begin to address them in a project manner. So one of the things I had done was to push for the Rodney Memorial to be done, which as you know was finished, and the new archives building and that new shopping area that we have in the Emancipation Park area. The next project really I had hoped was to refurbish the King's House, but that really is a very major project. What I'm happy about is that the Government of Spain is going to be giving us some assistance to refurbish not only the, the old King's House, but the old courthouse too. So to create a proper heritage square in Spanish town itself, which is what the Emancipation Square is now. Other than that, we had really been, done, been doing some work on the, what we call Old Road, which is in the leads to the historic bridge. Uh, we had done some work in terms of doing, putting some gabion and basket work on either side, on both sides of the stanchions of the bridge. I tell you, that had not been done. When you see the damage that Gustavo has done, you know that we would have been far worse off. So I am happy that this has kind of kicked start and pushed the Heritage Trust to move quickly to say, let's just secure what's there now. The important thing though is, as we do that, we have to allow the plans that the community had been formulating along with Heritage Trust, along with the Institute, to mean Jamaica Institute and Paris Council, um, into our own Spanish Town Festival, looking at a menu in respect of what kind of dishes we could prepare, what kind of dance festivals we'd have, what kind of products we would have that one of, when a tourist leaves, they leave with something as a sample. That's the kind of work we've done before, so I am happy that we're going to re-engage at that level. So other than the bridge being restored, there is the economic platforms that the community itself can look forward to. But the most important thing, other than the bridge at this time, and that is just to bring some stability back to those families. They were really very, very badly damaged. You can see it from the, the, the damage to the river course. And there are some 50 families, I mean, really badly hurt. So we have to look at that and take those things into account as we undertake this project. Okay. Um I did a tour through there, um, and what I've done is to ask the community liaison officer. Uh, the, it's 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 a there's a mix of voting in the area. It's more GLP than PNP. Well, that doesn't matter in any case. Right. But there's an agreement in terms of a committee that's there working. So what you find happening is that the, the GLP area leaders have been working with my community liaison office, and we're building out a community profile now. We're family by family. We know how many children, how many seniors, how many houses affected. So far, I've spent over 300,000 of welfare funds just to deal with the simplest of things. And there's far more that is needed. So when they finish the profiling this week, I'll be able then to approach the Minister of Water and Housing to pick that up and then move to another level. Nobody died, but um, the, fa the, 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 in the infrastructure in terms of the houses, every house got flooded out. Water came as high as the door, the top of the door. So you know that everything in the house has been just absolutely damaged. So the most important thing was to put bedding back in. And where people didn't have the chance to do that, to try you know, and give them support to a school. So some vultures have come, they've had their back to school treat, but there's still so much more to be done. Eh? So um, as I said, the profile would allow me to know how many more children, and then to do some letters to different schools and ask them to just accept them as they are, because I didn't realize there, tonight I'm hearing again that some children haven't gone to school, and they're in high school, because they just have no uniform. So I hope that in next week we can just begin addressing that front. Um, a day in politics is a long time, much less a week. Huh? And it's interesting the comments that were made because the two, the two ladies who 
who were on camera for that so-called demonstration. I don't like to people are at demonstration, but in any case, it's interesting that they say we're not suffering more is Winter Heights. The community became known as Winter Heights because I told them we can't use the name of Suffolk Heights. And in that community, we built out a combined citizens association. We refurbished four basic schools. We refurbished the White Mark Primary and Junior High, including putting in extra classrooms. Huh? Uh, we've we've uh, fixed the two main roads, we've done a map of the community, NWC is in there doing pipe extension work now. In Chinatown some 200 families had light extended, up in some shops here on Hamilton Drive we're doing that also. So look, 12,000 people in Windsor, two people feel unhappy. Uh, and it's interesting that those two people, it's the young lady in the jacket, she's in a job working at the Arawak Museum which I asked the institute to keep open because we wanted to ensure that there was still the opportunity for children to come and see what was happening there because you know we've been torn by violence and gang activity in the community. But I said look that can't stop the work that has to be done in terms of our heritage development. So we've been working with the institute on that and we've gotten to the point where we've developed a package and I hope that out of the CDF funds that are granted with discretion in the next year we can begin doing some other work in here to build out a proper tourism package for you. I was surprised and, and uh, a little taken aback but one of, the, one of the good things about Parliament is that each of us individually is recognised for our role as a legislator. So even though you come to be in Parliament because of a party platform, you are in there uh, for the qualities that you bring to the table. I have a very deep concern about crime and the interventions we can use in respect of control and to stop it also, not just a matter of control. You can't get changed if you're arguing from outside, you have to be on the inside. So while I may not have a vote, if that committee has to take a vote, I do have a right as a parliamentarian to sit at any sitting of any committee. And having been named at first, and even though having been named, I have been there and participating, and in fact the chairman welcomed me back and indicated that she was very happy, especially since I was the only other woman in the house.